Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I've got another Top 5 Tuesdays for you. We're gonna be talking about my top five favorite all-time setting powders. This Top 5 Tuesdays is a collaboration that I do with the Glam Dr. Mona Khan. She is a very good friend of mine and a fellow YouTuber. I will leave a link to her channel and her video for this week down below in my description box. Don't forget to check out her channel. You will definitely love it. If you like my content, you'll love her content. And she has a very different skin type than I do. She has a normal uh, combo skin type and I have very dry, sensitive skin. She doesn't have sensitive skin either. So we love talking about these base products because we can give very, very different viewpoints to it and we can talk about very, very different products and sometimes we overlap and we talk about the same product and then you know that it's like amazing because it can work for many, many different skin types. Anyway, don't forget to check out her video, her channel. So this was a video I promised you guys more than a week ago. So thank you for your patience. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and talk about my top five favorite setting powders. So I decided to keep this list to just loose setting powders. I don't know what Mona's doing. We just decided to say, you know, setting powders and kind of leave it general like that. But I decided to go with loose setting powders. That is definitely the setting powder that I probably gravitate towards more lately. I know when I first started getting into, or back into makeup, I should say, and getting into powders and really appreciating what setting powders do, I was using pressed powders. Uh, anytime previous to that, I the experience I had with loose powder was not good. It was always because I didn't know how to apply it and I was always using way, way too much. And for someone with dry skin, you really wanna stay away from the idea of using way too much loose powder. Pressed powder is a little bit uh, more like foolproof. Uh, it's, you know, you can only pick up so much, you know, when you go round and round in the pan, where with loose powder, you can really, really pick up way too much. So why don't I go ahead and talk about the one that I'm holding right now, and that is the Coke and Dough Natural Lighting Powder. It's the powder that I have on right now, and I, love it. I have talked about this quite a bit. I think it's appeared in my favorites once or twice already at this point. My preference for setting powder is I want it to have a matte to kind of natural skin finish. I don't want my setting powder to kind of add anything to my makeup. All I want it to do is set down my makeup. I don't want it to like add. I don't want it to add any sort of shimmer. I really don't want it to add any color. I don't want it to change the color of my foundation. A lot of powders can do that if they're tinted a little bit too deeply, if they're not translucent enough. So I like a really simple basic setting powder, one that's really not going to interfere with my makeup. This powder has just the slightest hint, and I hesitate in even using the word radiance because I feel like that gives a very strong connotation of like glow, but this has just the slightest bit of radiance. It gives your skin just the slightest like hint of like a pearl finish without really like altering the way your makeup looks. And when I talked about this powder in my last month's favorites, I mentioned I really like using this powder or I kind of discovered the beauty of this powder when I was using it over, let's say, a shimmery kind of base. So if I have a luminizing primer, a foundation with a little bit of glow, if I use uh, like a liquid highlighter, sometimes if I go in with a very matte kind of powder, it will just kind of block everything out and it's sort of like, what's the point? This powder really enhances it. It doesn't dampen it, it maybe dampens it a little bit because you're just you're simply putting powder on top, but because this allows for radiance to kind of shine through or enhance any radiance underneath your skin, it really just kind of brings out the radiance that you may have put on underneath. It's just gorgeous. I can't stop going on and on about this powder. I talk about it every chance I get. I think I talked about it in my uh, setting versus finishing powder powders and, uh, and it's appeared a lot in my favorites. So that is number one on my list. Number two on my list is a powder that is similar. It doesn't have as much of a, a like a pearly sheen to it. It has just a hint of a sheen to it, just a teensy teensy bit of a sheen to it. It's almost imperceptible, but it is very, very lovely. And I like the fact that this is talc free, but this is the Chantecaille Loose Powder and I have it in the shade Light. So it is a translucent powder. I believe there's only two shades. There's Light and I think Subtle, which is a little bit deeper than Light. But this powder is just lovely. It's great for my dry skin. It doesn't look drying at all. And it's so, so silky. Like True to Chantecaille powder products, all of their powder products are so, so finely milled. If you get it on your fingers, 
it just feels like pure silk. It's such a lovely powder. So that is the Shantakai Loose Powder and I have it in the shade Light. The next two powders that I'm gonna talk about, I've talked about a lot. Uh, I think these two powders dominated my 2018. Uh, but the first one is the Chanel Natural Finish Loose Powder. This is definitely a matte powder. There is like no radiance to it, but it is very, very natural. I don't feel like this makes my skin look very dry, but it definitely doesn't have any kind of radiance the way this does. So if I'm looking for something to really set down maybe an overly dewy foundation or a foundation that really kind of doesn't set at all, it really stays fairly tacky, I'll go in with something like this, or this is something I like to use in the warmer months when I start to glow a little bit. Even though I have dry skin, I can tend to sweat and uh, produce some oils, especially in my T-zone. So I like this powder for those occasions and that purpose. I have it in the shade 20 Claire. Uh, this is a translucent powder, so there are some shades in there. I, th I think there's quite a few shades actually of this Chanel powder. I feel like this would probably work for most most skin types. I feel like there's probably an option for most skin tones and I feel like it's not that matte. There's no radiance. It's like right in the middle. It has just a really nice skin-like finish. So I really like this Chanel. It's like a workhorse powder. So this is a really, really good one. The next one on my list is the Clay de Peau Loose Powder and this is another translucent powder. They only have one shade and the shade of this powder is pretty cool toned. It has like almost like a light, light, the lightest pink kind of tint to it. And for my skin tone, it looks okay. Sometimes white kind of white, white, white cool tone powders will make me look ashy, but this one actually has a very nice brightening effect to my skin tone. But I have heard, especially from those with more yellow and olive skin tones, that this will end up looking a little bit gray on their skin. So that's definitely something to be aware of when it comes to this powder. But this is another one that is so, so finely milled. It just kind of like melts right onto your skin. It has such a beautiful matte finish. It's matte without being drying looking. And again, it's it's just so fine. There's something about the texture of this powder that really makes it impeccable. It's just such an impeccable, impeccable powder. And it has a slight rose scent, that Clay de Peau signature rose scent. This powder has it as well. It's very, very faint. I feel like this loose powder is the powder that kind of set me down the road on loose powders. I didn't have that much faith in them before this one. And after using this one, I was like, oh my God, I now see like the benefit of loose powder, the beauty of loose powder, how much more beautiful they can look than a pressed powder. I fell in love with this one. I fell in love with loose powders in general because of this one. And it's really, Really, really flawless but I do recommend if you get the chance if you are able to to definitely take a look at this in person or purchase this from a place where you can return it because of that slight cool light pink tint to it I feel like it may not work on every skin tone so that's just something to be aware of with this particular loose powder so those four powders were very easy, very, very easy to select. And then when it came to this fifth spot, I felt like I had three or four powders where I was like, I feel like any of these could do, but I decided to go with this one, even though I use this loose powder for a very small, specific part of my face, but this is the Viseart Seamless Setting Powder, or just setting powder. I think it's called the Seamless Setting Powder. Anyway, that's this guy right here and it is one of those like white, really, really um, silky, silky smooth powders. And I like using this under my eyes. I thought for sure it was going to look way, way too drying and that it was going to kind of just like suck the moisture out of my skin, but it doesn't. It makes my skin look incredibly matte without the dryness. It's pretty magical. And when I use it under my eyes, and the reason why I like using it under my eyes is because it has this really, interesting, effective blurring effect underneath my eyes. It really does a number to any of the fine lines that I have, especially when I start making facial expressions, my fine lines really start to come out and this keeps them like blurred. It's a really kind of magical setting powder. A lot of people ask me why I don't use this all over my face and it's because it is so matte that I really don't like it all over my face. It just makes my skin look too flat and I don't really like that. But under my eyes, I don't mind that kind of like matte flatness right underneath there. I think it can look actually very flattering, especially if you like kind of like a brightening effect. Um, I like when powders do that. And I usually use 
the Wayne Goss airbrush to apply it under my eyes. I'll just take some and I'll just kind of like pat it on. You know, not that I bake, but I'll let it sit there for like, you know, like less than a minute, maybe like 30 seconds, and then I'll wipe away the excess. So I like the Wayne Goss airbrush for this one. And that is it. So one, two, three, four, five, yes. So those are my top five favorite setting powders. Let me know what some of your favorite setting powders are down below in the comment section. I know there's a couple setting powders out there that everyone loves that I cannot use. They look so, so thick and cakey on my skin. The Laura Mercier uh, translucent setting powder that everyone loves, I can't use it. It looks awful on my skin, and the Hourglass Veil Setting Powder. Both of those powders I know are very popular and they look awful on my dry, more mature skin. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe down below if you haven't already. Don't forget to check out the Glam Dr. Mona Khan's video and I will see you in my next video.